913 WVKR Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. You are tuned into Local Motion here. We air live each and every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Local Motion on 913 WVKR YouTube channel, as well as giving a like and a follow to the Facebook page by the same name. Let's get today's guest on air. Cecilia. Hello? Hola, mi amor. Hola, mi amor. ¿Cómo estás? How are you? Oh, my goodness. Wie geht's? Sehr gut. Danke. Und dir? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to Japanese next. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just mix in a little bit of everything. Let me do a brief introduction here of you, if I may, with our listening audience. Let's start out by saying NPR Music says El Jorge, El Jorge is a triple threat. She's an accomplished songwriter, a great vocalist, and one hell of a guitar player. One of the world's most renowned Latina artists who is a revered songwriter and multi-instrumentalist. El Jorge released her fifth solo album, Reflection, on September 30th of this year. She recorded it right here in the Hudson Valley, and with that, a warm first-time welcome to Local Motion, El Jorge. Oh, my God, it's such an honor to be here. Oh, my gosh. And it's, it's, especially because of where we recorded Reflexion. Yeah. That's the most exciting part. Yeah. That's the most exciting part. Well, you and I met, I think, right when you were either finished that night or you were in the middle of mixing. We met at Levon Helm Studios. Yes, at Levon Helm Studios. And because and, Jim Weeder had um, invited invited me to the show, I met him at, at the clubhouse. And he's the you know leader of the weight. Right. Yep. And be- him and his beautiful telecaster yes 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 <laughs> beautiful friend of telecast and and then we that's where you and i met that's right and connected and i'm like this is a great scene up here it is a great, great scene mu- great music vibe yeah. yeah and i think that was your first time at levon's too wasn't it definitely the first time i've been up there yeah, yeah. Um, i've been missing it a lot of uh a lot of great music up, up there. Well, now you now know I, what's here. Now I here. know better. Now yes. you know better. Now you know what's here. We were already talking off air, trying to get you up here in the Hudson Valley. So we'll talk further about that. Um, so when I was doing my homework about you, um, I listened to several other interviews that you've done and obviously read some things. And one of the things, for some reason, really sticks to my mind. And we're going to go back in time after this, but I really like what you said, your your words, quote, for a change to happen, you have to believe in a vision. Mm-hmm. Very simple, right. very simple, yeah. Um, yeah. And but it hit me. I'm glad. It, it, um, that is really what inspires my songwriting, mm-hmm. is the, the passion behind and belief in people and the power they have within um, to, to make a better change, a better world. I really, I really truly believe that I'm a socially conscious um, songwriter and have been since I was a little girl, (laughs) you know? So um, it just so happens I'm an immigrant. It just so happens I sing a lot in Spanish and, and I'm a woman, (laughs) you know? So there's a lot of things we have to, um, to change for the better. Yes. Yes. And the time is now. Yeah, absolutely. And it's urgent. It's urgent. Like Sava La Tierra is about, climate change and how the the time is now and like it's a call to action and actually when we recorded that that song we recorded up in in Rhinebeck at the clubhouse with the great Paul Antonell and uh the out chorus my manager Alexander Gatchi and Paul Antonell were both brainstorming and they said okay this has a great chorus let's invite some some university kids to come sing the out chorus and so we invited a bunch of students from Bard College, yeah. which is right 10 minutes away. And, right. they, you know, two car full of students came for pizza and beer and to sing the outcourse. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't speak Spanish. It didn't matter. Right. Their energy was great. Some of them were music majors. Some were human rights majors. So it was like the right people. And the energy was great. Because the change has to come for my generation, I've learned from generations before and for those generations after. Well, we're talking you know? about this the day after Election Day. And it's these Gen Xers, these 18 to 25-year-olds that are making a difference in our political elections right now. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so excited about that. And I'm very optimistic. When I, when, like when we recorded Salvador Theater, we, and we had conversations over beer and pizza, right. <laughs> you know, the high, high end recording, that we, we decided, uh, I mean, we connected in so many ways. And you could tell that they were motivated. And you could tell that they weren't going to, they were going to be more, more tolerant of people that are different. Mm-hmm. It's just a, it's very, it made me very, optimistic it's also true when i tour the people you talk to i'm very optimistic about the next generation you know the future generation yeah but we're still here and here to make a change right for Ab- them for us for each other yeah absolutely a hundred percent i love it you you know you you can always entice college students with pizza and beer so good on you <laughs> for doing that that <laughs> worked out well oh gosh um so let's go back in time a little bit um i typically say to my guests this is your life um let's go back so you're born in ecuador your mom was lebanese and your father ecuadorian do i have that correct or is it the opposite my, no my father's actually from spain my mother's from lebanon but they both grew, grew up in my father's from santander spain and my mother from uh, in lebanon but their families moved to, to south america to the americas for better future or whatever more opportunities mm-hmm. and they met there and that's where I'm, I'm the last of four kids. That's where we were all born. And then my parents came to New York, the country of New York. <laughs> exactly. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> and um, for opportunities for, you know, us. And um, so I grew up in New York City. So I'm a Latin from Manhattan, basically. <laughs> uh-huh. I love it. I love it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. My Same thing here. My mother, I'm it was an immigrant from Germany. So same thing. So we're all immigrants yes. at one generation or another, you know, so it, um, it happens that way. Um, so Rita, f- you, w- Rita, you, you were, where did you grow? Up? I actually was born here in the US, um, but then yes. spent most of the first eight years of my life in Germany. So I went to first oh, and second grade wow. there. Hence, I speak it, you know, pretty fluently. I'm not perfect yes. in it, but I'm definitely conversational, you know, fluent in German. That's so. fantastic. It is. It and, is. And, and you and you're more op- open and worldly because of those experiences. I think yeah. so. Mm-hmm. I think so. I think so. Um, so your father, a uh, famous actor, TV and film. Yes. Yeah. Yes. My, and theater and radio um, and he met my mother. They, my mother was a pian- composer pianist, and she wanted to do the music for some film he was doing, and that's how they met. And fell in love. Oh, that's so and, sweet. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> and I understand your mom is somebody like, you know, people always ask who your influence is when you have a musician. I rarely ask that, by the way. Um, so, mm-hmm. um, but I did hear you do an interview where you said your mom was actually a huge influence on your Absolutely. musicianship. Yeah, I mean, I grew up with it, sitting by the piano listening to her play, and my first melodic lines came out of that p- same piano. And um, she's just a, a believer in the craft of music, had beautiful melodies she wrote, was an incredible musician and pre- and st- as well as a composer. Mm. And just, just the positive, positive energy towards cre- the creative world that, that I was surrounded by. My parents giving me that, offering that to me as a, it was became an outlet for me, and then you know, being exposed to the like punk and new wave days in New York City. I was young for those days, but I looked up to those mm-hmm. that scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, yeah. made me aspire to be kind of a combination of you know what I learned at home and what I saw in, in the New York City music scene, which was rock and funk and punk and reggae, and everything. Soul. Right, you saw <laughs> it my, all. Yes, and and at home it was all the Latino culture, the rumba flamenco and Afro Cuban and pasillos from Ecuador, and so so that's my my sonic palette is that comes from the, did, those, those places. Did your family speak Spanish at home or a mix of English and Spanish? My my parents, we spoke to them in Spanish. To our siblings and friends, we spoke in English, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it was very very much Spanish at home, very much a. Uh, uh, yes, you should assimilate, but don't let go of your culture. Mm-hmm. The roots, a lot of family in Ecuador flew, went there all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was a, really the best of both worlds. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Isn't that wonderful? It really is I'm wonderful. Very lucky. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it is yeah. to be able to lucky, travel to another culture and have family there and just really connect to that. And uh, it's awesome. Um, I understand you also love art, visual art. 
Yes, and I do. And I uh, fortunately, I surround my. I I work with great great visual people, visual minded people in my music that supports like the, my music videos are with incredibly creative people. I have Sandra Gatchi, who's a graphic designer. Yeah. And then I have the collective, which are are these videographers I work with forever. Um, the video for Salva La Piera is uh, this this great illustrator Anna Raff did a stop action video for that. So I appreciate it. I'm not an artist myself, but I am surrounded by such talented, visually minded people that get my vision and share my vision. So I'm again, I'm just a very, I'm feeling incredibly lucky, Rita. These days, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Um, I saw some of your videos that are on your website, which will um, get out to the public here as well as so people can check it out. You're just a badass is what you are. You're just <laughs> a badass and um, so much fun to watch. Thank live. You. you sing in English, you sing in Spanish. Now this new CD that we're going to talk about in a little while and play more tracks of it's all Spanish, right? Or just the last bonus track is not. Oh no, no. There's there's a like two or three songs that are in English, okay, and a couple that are like English Spanish, and the the rest are are in Spanish. So okay, it's predominantly Spanish. I think I've with, played like three yeah. tracks, and they all just happen to be Spanish already, like yeah. on air, <laughs> and they've all been Spanish. So I was like, oh, I've been the first doing three singles are Spanish. That's yeah. what I've been playing. That's exactly <laughs> why. Yeah, that explains yeah. it. So let's talk about music and first coming into your life. I, I understand, like you just said, you know, your parents were super supportive. Your mom, a composer, pianist. Your first instrument, of course, was your piano at home. Yes, exactly. Piano is the best, and I think it's a great instrument to start for any young uh, budding musician or anybody who just wants music to be in their lives as a as a, a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, the piano is the best because you could you under, you could learn so much from the the theory. All the notes are right there, <laughs> laid right. out beautifully. Right. So it's, a, it's I have great respect. I'm not a pianist, you know, I'm a guitarist and singer, but I have great respect for for people who are who excel in the piano and and it's my i think one of my favorite instruments for sure yeah yeah it's just a beautiful yeah. sound i think so um yeah so did you take lessons or was it your mom that was teaching you on the piano it was both i took i did take piano lessons which is good because then i learned music theory from that mm-hmm. and i and my mother too of course um always gravitating towards original ideas but obviously you know you can't go wrong playing least or Bach or right. <laughs> you know you know like it's you know the, the piano teaches you a lot about harmony and theory and dynamics like classical music you learn a lot about dynamics but then when you, but it's time to rock that's when you feel the energy seeping through your veins in a whole different way mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah mm-hmm. absolutely um it's fun to rock it is fun to rock it is fun to rock um <laughs> it is. and what about school like did you play an instrument in school i i sang and played and then i i played a little bit of drums in fifth grade i had my first band and i was playing drums for five minutes well, wait 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 piano, what, what piano, was your band piano. name i always like these first band names what we was the, were the the strawberries the strawberries <laughs> oh how cute yes. okay I like that. The and it was it was an all girl band. There were three of us. And mm-hmm. I played the drums, and my friend Jean played guitar, and Francis played bass. And we and I went to Catholic school, so we were just trying to find a way to escape from all the insanity. And so we would were working towards our little concert, but we, in between the songs that we did for the concert, we played the Stones and you know the I, Kinks and people like that. All the good stuff. <laughs> all the good stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah. switched to guitar at what, tw- 12 or 13? About 12, 13, yeah, because then, uh, you know, then I, I was into more of that, that world of like, oh, I can craft my own song and sing it all by myself with my guitar in my room, you know, that whole thing. Right. And had great respect for a lot of, a lot of singer-songwriters and like, the, you know, the world of like, you know, Neil Young, Bob Marley, all those people who were with an acoustic guitar telling a story. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I fell in love with the guitar and formed bands right away and was playing CBGBs when I was 17. Damn, basically. that's that awesome. Yeah. That's really <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. And then I went to electric and it was like no turning back, you know. Right. I love the acoustic, but the electric is, for live, is, is sure a lot of, surely a lot of fun. Yeah. You know? when, when did composition start for you? 
or when I was five, I was writing melodies. Really? Um, but wow. real, real songs were like 12, 13, 14, yeah. like that. When, when I had the guitar. When you yeah. picked up the guitar. Yeah. Uh, uh, when I was writing real, like a, a full song that I wrote, you know. Right. Yeah. And you had bands in high school. I understand you had a basement in the building you lived in. And, um, yes, yes, that's good. Yes, we had basement, and, and my favorite thing my mother would say, she didn't say turn down, she said tune up. I love it. <laughs> Make sure you're in tune, because otherwise it's really hard to listen to. Right. Loud is loud, you know, it's fine, because you're playing rock, but you always got to be in tune. Yeah, coming from one <laughs> musician to another, that's a good thing to take from your mom, absolutely. Oh my God, totally, and and we all learned that lesson. I have other friends who are still musicians to this day that I played with in those days, which is funny. Oh, that is mm-hmm. funny. That is cool. Yeah. I love the and names of story. your little bands when you were in high school. The Rabbits, I understand. Yeah. Oh, yes. Good intel, yes. And the Yin Rabbits. Yang. Yin Yang and songs like I'm Just a Teenager and Baptism by Fire and I don't care. Those are the lyrics. That's great. That's great. It's a good yeah. start, you know. I, I always yeah, love those absolutely. early names of bands. It's just cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you did something when I found out about this. I was like, what? You went to yeah. college, not for music, but for theoret- the- theoretical mathematics? Yes, I mean, love, I always loved learning. And Good for you. And is enticing. And so I was still playing music, so I didn't feel like that was a, pa- was a pa- there was no pause there. So I was like, well, I'm going to pursue this intellectual need to fill you know, the curiosity of math. Wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. It's very different, but very complimentary. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but I don't like to think, think about music the way I think about math. I mm-hmm. like to play music from my heart, mm-hmm. passionate side. And mm-hmm. so there's kind of different, different approaches. That makes any sense. It does make sense. Yeah, yeah. it does. It yeah. does. And while you're doing all this in college, you still played music. You did not give that up, correct? No, no, absolutely not. Kept playing. That's what I'm saying. I kept playing music. So right, never you know, battle with bands in college and this and that. And then, and then um, after college, I, I started. I formed a band called the T Dolls, the Trouble Dolls, which were an all girl band, and the T Dolls were the sh- nickname for the Trouble Dolls. And we played the whole circuit and the whole scene in New York. We played the, you know, CDs, the Bitter End and all those. Wow. Um, I, I don't know what listeners know, like as far as your listeners know about it, the New York scene. Oh, they do. But, sure. We're right up the road as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you guys, yeah. You guys are, in, it's an amazing um, community you have up there. But that whole Bleecker Street and, you know, Arlene's Grocery, all that, Mercury Lounge, Brownies, all that whole scene was the Trouble Dolls. And wow. we were, we were, and right, th- that's when I always wanted to infuse, like, and I was the main songwriter, I wanted to infuse the uh, the Latino rhythms into into the songs we had. And reggae, reggae, Latino, funk, and rock were what we were about, so. Nice. Did you always play yeah. Latino music, or like when you were younger, did you start out doing like English music? Was it all in English? So it was mostly in English until until then I started Grupo Fiesta because I wanted to go deeper. And so Trouble Dolls were English. The Yang Yang, all those other bands were English songs, writing in English. But then I switched to, started writing in Spanish because I, I was always on indie labels. This indie label that signed us was, uh, when I started Grupo Fiesta, they wanted me to write, rewrite the songs into Spanish because they loved the songs, mm-hmm. but they wanted both English and Spanish versions. So when I wrote, rewrote them in Spanish, I was like, wow, I really like singing in Spanish. I really like writing in Spanish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it kind of got me deeper, in, and that was much more like tropical Afro-Cuban kind of rock band. And then, I, then there was no turning back from all those great rhythms and kind yeah. of honing my sound, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When did your activism begin? Was it in college or after? Um, I would say like, the, like after college, the t Dolls days, I, we, we, you know, we had songs against the war. Like I, the songwriting was always like driving the acti- activism. Like it came first. Mm-hmm. That makes a, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then over time as, as, I evolved as a songwriter. I also evolved as an activist. And 
and then and that's another one no turning back you can't turn back <laughs> you know once you go there and and then i'm like wow i can kind of use my music to raise awareness to these very important issues right right um and so then oh then i can do more on those very important issues in other ways too and that's kind of how it i evolved as right. um in my activism yeah. mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. It's cool. You've got the the full complete package going on there. And um, uh, you do only your own music, right? You're not doing any covers ever. Everything that we're hearing on Reflection is all written by you. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. I do do have a couple of songs on other songs. I went solo in in 2008 with my first album, and Bass. And on that album, I had... My, a song of my mother's that I did, I covered, oh. which is a pasillo. So that is her song. <laughs> mm. And then I also co-wrote some songs with Fly and Robbie from Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Um, they found, they discovered me, and when I was working on my first album, because I had a, 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 like a reggae song that I wrote, because I've always played reggae, because I grew up in clubs playing with reggae musicians. And, and so they reached out, and we co-wrote this one song on my album and bus. And then each of the, my next albums, I had a song with Flying Robbie. <clears throat> then unfortunately, Ro- Robbie Shakespeare passed away last year mm. when I was working on this album. So, No Puedo Cruzar, the reggae song on this album, Reflexion, is called No Puedo Cruzar and is kind of in, it, out of respect for Flying Robbie. Oh. You know, because they're ma- amazing. Wow. Amazing musician. Yeah. But other than that, yes, all the songs are mine. <laughs> There's wow. no exceptions. Yes. Yeah. And this new song. this new um twelve track release, I call it reflection, but you call it something much more um much nicer in Spanish than I say it. Um say it in Spanish. It sounds so much nicer, more eloquent. Well reflexion because there's a tilde over the O in Spanish, but mm-hmm. it's but it translates into English as well. So, that, so it's it's still it is also reflection, and um, it, it, and it, it really is a part a, a time in my life when, when I felt like there was so much going on, and we had we were fighting COVID and all that. Mm-hmm. That we still are, whatever. But um, I felt like you, you get you have to dig in deeper inside when things are even more troubling, and that's what I went through when I was writing this album. Mm. Mm. How does writing come to you? Is it is it something that comes in like spurts, or do you take time for it and sit down and say, "Okay, I'm going to write today"? Or how does that work for you? That process. That's a great question. I have a home studio full, you know, Pro Tools rigs and a lot of music, uh, instruments, and I play a lot of instruments. So not not great. I mean, I'm play them adequately enough to to compose with mm-hmm. you know bass, uh, programming, drums, and percussion. And, keyboards and whatever. So I usually sit, really sit in my home studio and write Mm -hmm. and wait for ideas to come or grab ideas as they come when I'm in the wherever on the go. And then I have like a kind of a a bank of ideas, whether it's a lyric or melodic idea that I taped or something. I And then I have those kind of accessible to me in my home studio and then build on something that's worthy, what I think is worthy of the seed and then take it from there. But it's some, it comes in so many different ways. <laughs> I'm in the shower, mm-hmm. a melody. It could be I'm on the train subway and I think of a lyric or, you know, I read an article somewhere and it sticks with me and the middle of a dinner with friends and you need to just have to like jot it down. Right. You know? Right. That's why the, the mm-hmm. note app is for on the phone, right? You just send yourself it, a note. The note and the, and the other app is the uh, voice memos. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very handy for yeah. all these ideas. Even if after, even I love also doing arrangements, arrangements, a big part of my, my interest as an art musician. Mm-hmm. So, that's why I have a full fledged studio, and I can arrange things around the, the melodic ideas and take them to the next level of what I envision. And that's where I might write a harmony in the shower. I don't know why, but in the love shower, that. I like to write harmony. I love that. <laughs> I love that. 
That is wonderful. Um, a lot of good things come to you in the shower, right? Because you're like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just starting your day, or da, da, da. yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing creative thing you that one can do um, is in the shower. Um, so this fifth, this this <laughs> latest release is your fifth solo album. Yes, my okay. fifth solo album. And mm-hmm. I know that you've just been on tour, right? You went to Mexico, you went to Portugal? Well, we did We did like a Northeast, like when we released, right before we released some singles this summer, and we did some Northeast, a bunch of Northeast states in the U.S., and then had a record release party in, in, in New York City. I'm so sorry um, I couldn't come to that. Alex invited pub, me. Yes. Yeah, it was oh, a good, it good. was a Wednesday night, but and I'm here Wednesdays. I do this live, <laughs> so I, I couldn't do it, but I, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to talk to Paul and Antonel from the Clubhouse, which is an amazing, one of the most amazing studios and most amazing experiences of my life, because I lived there for six weeks. Oh, nice. So you lived in the barn and you took like I did, advantage I did. of the compound. I love the compound and it's mostly because of the people. Mm-hmm. And the gear the gear wasn't so bad either. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So right. Joking. Right. Right. But I want I want to talk to Paul Antonel and Alex, my manager, about having like, you know, a record release party up there mm-hmm. the next year because we really should. You it's should. A celebration. We should, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that, so we so we did do that and we'll we'll make sure you we schedule it around around your schedule not on a wednesday (laughs) any day but a wednesday i'll be there i'll be there um yeah no and i can give you some ideas with that as well if you need help so that's not a problem just have alex reach out um i'm looking at some of the musicians that were on this with you um as you say so eloquently in some of the other interviews and articles i've read about you you don't do anything alone right you're part of a team Oh, God, and, no. Yeah, no. so talk to me about some of the amazing musicians you have joined, you, that have joined you on this album. Well, the I, I would say, like, the primary musician that has worked with me now for over 10 years, um, many many of my albums has tour, toured with me many places, is Alex Alexander. He's from Cali, Colombia, but he's like me. He was raised in New York City, so he's got, he was born in Cali, Raised in New York, and he's an incredible drummer and completely understands my vision. He's exposed to, <clears throat> has been exposed to rock, the rock side of the world as well as all the Afro-Cuban stuff that I do, and he's also a great percussionist. So he's, like, poor, and then the, the rhythm section that comes, and Winston Roy, the bass, my bass player, between, Winston Roy is unbelievable, and he's a funk master and a groove monster. And the two of them are really my, my core rhythm section that I build everything off of. And you, you know? can see so, that on the videos that you've uploaded on your website. Tell people what your website is, please. Oh, my website is El Hudi Music with, um, on YouTube, E-L-J-U-R-I-M-U-S-I-C. So it's elhudimusic.com is the website. And from there, you can go to YouTube or you know, Instagram or Facebook. <clears throat> yeah, so we're really a power trio, Then and then there's layers and layers that get built off of off that core. I'm a, you know, I'm just a lover of great grooves. Right. So that's what they bring to the table. And so did Sly and Robbie, obviously, in some of those earlier records, but um, they are my guys, you know what I mean? We, like you said, we just, then we went, we went on tour to Mexico and had a great time there and had a record release event there in addition to some other shows and a lot of promotion. <clears throat> so they, they're, um, they're just amazing. Yeah. And then I had, um, I had the chronic horns do a bunch of, song, um, um, songs. They did like four songs and the chronic horns are a really great story. It's Jenny Hill on, <clears throat> on sax. And we have Pam Fleming on, on, um, trumpet. Uh huh. And Buford O'Sullivan, who's the trombonist. Love it. <clears throat> and they, you know, they understood my arrangements and they made them better, <laughs> mm-hmm. which they're amazing players. And I've known Jenny and Pam from the earlier days in the New York scene when they were burning, burning brass. Wow. Which was part of Burning Spear. Oh, They wow. played with Burning Spear for many, many years. So they were burning brass and they were three women. Buford wasn't, wasn't part of that then. He because he's not a woman and <laughs> and so I was like Jenny I'm working on this record and we reconnected and um, she she played with me a couple of shows a couple of years ago and 
and they completely understood the songs because they've been in, they played Latin music, they played reggae, they played funk. So they, they're on um, four of the songs. Oh, I'm that's so cool! So excited! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw um, Johnny Passano also. He's also one hell of oh, a bassist, huh? Oh, Johnny Pie! Johnny Pie has been on yeah. on other albums of mine. He's been on La Lucha, my album La Lucha. Oh, nice! Um, and he he's. I've toured with him too, and Tracy Wormworth. Do you know Tracy? I don't think I know Tracy. I know Johnny P from Willie Nile. Yeah, Johnny P from Willie Nile, because because he's all because Alex Alexander also played with Willie for some years. So he, I was like, I need you know to find a great pace. So this before I met Winston and Johnny Pie has played with Alex for a long time. So they locked. So Johnny Pie came in and played with me for for a bunch of years, and Tracy Wormworth, who's in the B-52s and the waitresses. Do you, do you know, like, that's... Got it. That, that, okay, that, now I know, that, yes. Okay. Yep. So Tracy and Johnny shared the duties on, on the album before La Lucha, the third album, sorry. And I've t- done tour dates with them. And, t- and then I found uh, Winston, because everybody's, you know, crazy in New York and busy. And, right. But Winston has been playing with me for years now. Oh, so. nice, nice. And, yeah, I'm very lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some of these songs, twelve of them. Wow, and I love the um, the sheet. You know, the one sheet where uh, all your management is on, and just what the songs are about, like Espejo. I guess I'm saying that incorrectly, but it's Mirror. And is that that's correct? pretty good, Espejo? Espejo, yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you said it right. Yeah. yeah, and and just a little bit of what it's all about. I love that. See, that's why I, I, I'm so old school. I don't do downloads because I like this stuff. I like to see where the Yay. credit is. I like to see who's on Yay. the album. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm really old school when it comes to this stuff. So it's it's yeah. it's very. Um, fitting to have it all out here like this so um you're going to the netherlands one of my favorite places on the planet in yes. the spring yes in the spring we're gonna we're gonna do our it's our my debut in europe i did like some i'm a gibson guitarist you know I, i'm known for my guitar playing so i've done some things in europe for guitar playing wise but not bringing a band my band there so i'm oh. really excited to be breaking ground in Europe in the Benelux re- region. They are going to love you. We're there. really excited. We're, that's how we're going to start the year. We're also going to, we're also going to Folk Alliance. We have a, a, a uh, does that, do you know anything about Folk Alliance? No, in, tell in, me more. So Folk Alliance International is in Kansas City, Missouri, and it's really a gathering of tradi- a lot of traditional genres. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> which are like a lot of Americana and Bluegrass and all that, but the international, I'm the international part. So they have showcases and I have an official showcase. Um, and that's in, in February also. So we're going to start the year with, with, uh, Kansas city and, and the Netherlands. Oh man, <laughs> that is wonderful. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, that's, that's really terrific. And then I hope you, you get a date here in the Hudson Valley too, because, um, you recorded it here. You might as well, you know, come out here and play yes. a little bit too. That yes. would be we, really. We we're, we're definitely have a, a lot more promotion and touring to do around this album. We're just working updates now and sh- and shows. And I absolutely fell in love with Rhinebeck. I fell in love. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, the Hudson Valley is a beautiful <laughs> place to fall in love with. My guess is that you also went walking at Poets Walk, perhaps. And um, yes, you yes. saw the beautiful park there. And um, if you cross, Gorgeous. yeah, if you cross the bridge, right, the Rhinecliffe Bridge to go over to Kingston, it's breathtaking. The mountains, the but, scenery, it's, you know, it's welcome to the Hudson stun- Valley. Stunning. Yeah. Stunning. And, and, and we, we really locked, like I said, six weeks because I'm, I'm also the producer of the record. So we did like three weeks of tracking and three weeks of mixing. And with the idea of like going back and forth on the weekends, maybe to New York City, and I was like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, uh-uh. no, 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 no. Yeah. And I was like, I hope it snows. They're like, what? I'm like, yes. Right. The snow here stays on the ground and it twinkles and it's beautiful and it's pure. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like really, really heavenly. And we had these wonderful dinners and met all these great musicians that stopped by and you know so we had like really the best the best recording experience of my life has been Aww. with with at the clubhouse and Rhinebeck. well my guess is now. that um you know 
album number six will be coming at some point and will be recorded there as well. That that, that would be a dream, continued dream to come true. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, heaven, heaven, heaven is true. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm so happy for you. And, and, um, you you're know, very kind. your, your music is, is so catchy and it's just so cool what you do. And you really are a badass guitarist and it's just, you know, female or not, it shouldn't even matter. You're just a guitarist, right? And you're Thank just you very much really Thank good at what much. you do. And it's, it's contagious. Like I've played it here on air. I listened to your videos when I was doing my homework, learning more about <laughs> you. And it's just like, wow, I really like this stuff. This is really cool. So, um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. The world needs more people like you in it. And, um, yeah, and thank you for your activism and and helping and spur the next generation as well. And um, I'm I'm very grateful for people like you. We have a voice. We have to use it. I want to inspire people. I'm inspired by people. That's what inspires me to write songs. And I know I believe that music can be uplifting, healing, absolutely connect us uh-huh. and what you know rub the line between borders. Rub it, let's celebrate our differences. Let's just lift each other up and. And 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 fight against you know all these te- these you know terribly difficult issues that we're around and believe in each other. I am a believer of mankind and you know womankind, whatever humankind. Right. And I know that music can can help help get us there. It's helped me as a listener, and it connects me to people. I'm very lucky, fortunate to have people like you. Giving giving musicians like me a platform. So oh, I'm very absolutely. grateful to you and your listeners. You know, really. I I just go see live music at least I try once a week or more. For me, it's my weekly therapy session, right? Fantastic. And it Fantastic. is just the thing that unites us all. Like when you sit in a room and you're listening to music, we're all there for one common experience there's so true and and that's the beauty of seeing live music it's great listening to recordings i'm not you know that's it's a great thing but for me experiencing it live with a room full of other people where everybody's just on the same level it's very rare that one can do that nowadays and it's just and it, you know it's music nice. it's, a, it's a fantastic and it's an international language that's so not like it, it like again it, it connects not not dissects people we you know we have too many boxes that people live in we have to take those boxes down and just hug each other musically yes you know yes it's yes. really important yeah no absolutely um tell me what track you'd like me to play next from your oh album. no i don't <laughs> yeah yeah you're the dj come on mm. you got i already i played espejo um and i have you know, eleven others to choose from. You pick. You be the DJ. Do you want to do? Do you want to do English? I don't how care. Do one of we, each. We could, give me. Give me a couple. Do, okay. How about home and La Voz? And who? La Voz. Check three. Oh, La, La Voz. Voz three. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. I have it on and three home. right now. Yep. So that's what we'll do. Cecilia, it's been a delight. And um, I do look forward to staying in touch with you and Alex and hopefully seeing you guys up here sometime and performing yep, and all of that stuff because um, I'm definitely a fan of your music for sure. I'm so grateful to you and love to all your listeners and um, all the great people up there that I met. Yeah. Big shout out. Yeah, big shout out. Right back at you, girl. Um, your website, tell us again. How do people contact you? How do they hear your music? Where is it? Sorry, I'm choking over here. That's okay. No problem. We'll wait. <coughs> We're good. El, Hur- El Huri Music. E L J U R I Music dot com also right. on facebook on all the socials really it doesn't matter right you're on all of it yes and you could join the web like our on our website you could join an email list and we do do old school email blasts with updating people with news the best way to do it it really yeah. is isn't it because everybody's on so many different things on on the social platforms that if you get an email at least it's right there and you don't miss it because so many exactly. people follow so many things, it's best to go on there. Again, elhuremusic.com, E-L-J-U-R-I music.com. Cecilia, it's been a delight. You're a badass. Keep doing it. And um, You too, Rita. Thank you. And I'll see you and talk with you again sometime. Thank you. Thanks for your time Mil today. Gracias. Y besos. Besos. Gracias.
Hasta luego. Chao. Okay, chao. 91.3 WVKR Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. El, El Jure Reflexion. This was recorded here locally in Rhinebeck and just released September of this year. Let's take a listen to another track right here, right now on 91.3 WVKR. <laughs> Es más difícil que parece al principio en la unidad. La voz de la conciencia, la mano de la compasión. La voz de la conciencia, la mano de la compasión. No al cálculo de la razón, la mano de la compasión. WVKR Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. Today's guest, El Hure. El Hure's released her fifth solo release, Reflexion, and that was the track called Lavo. 
We're going to listen to one more track, but it's also time to do musical happenings. We do this towards the end of the show. We list local venues in alphabetical order in the hopes that you go out and support live music. Let's start off with Bardavon and UPAC. Bardavon.org, November 19th, The Weight Band and Larry and Teresa. December 15, Jack DeJeanette with John Baptiste and Matthew Garrison. December 17, Hudson Valley Philharmonic Handles Messiah. Barnstock in Woodstock, also barnstockny.com. November 11th is Grape Jam. Bearsville Theater in Woodstock and bearsvilletheater.com. December 3, Rubble Bucket. December 17, California Guitar Trio. Caramore in Katona, also at caramore.org. November 13th, Ivalis Quartet. December 3, Josh Ritter. City Winery in Hudson Valley, Montgomery, New York. Info at citywinery.com. November 11, Lauren Monroe. November 26, Strawberry Fields. Colony in Woodstock and colonywoodstock.com. Tonight, Studio Stew Swimming in Honey. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the Dresden Dolls, but unfortunately they are sold out. Sunday, Comedy with Eddie Pepitone. And every Monday is an open mic at Colony. Dogwood and Beacon, also dogwoodbeacon.com. Thursday, the dawn of Audrosonic. Friday, Girls on Grass and Wire Troop. Saturday, the Hudson Seven. And Sunday, the Beacon Songsmiths. At the Falcon in Marlboro and live at thefalcon.com. Tonight, Richard Lloyd's Television. Thursday, the Hudson Seven. Friday, Stephen Clare. Saturday, C. Landsbaum of Dead Grass and Friends. And Sunday, Jazz Coalition Series continues with Stephen Bernstein's Millennial Territory Orchestra. Fisher Center at Bard College and fishercenter.bard.edu. Tonight, November 9th, Tomorrow's Promises, Marcus Roberts and the Modern Jazz Generation Band. November 11th, a chamber music concert. Howland Chamber Music at Howland Cultural Center in Beacon. Info and tickets at howlandmusic.org. This Sunday, November 13, Publi Quartet. Jazz Forum in Terrytown and jazzformarts.org. Friday and Saturday, November 11 and 12, two shows each night, Ray Blue Quintet. Levon Helm Studios in Woodstock and levonhelm.com. November 13, Darling Slide. November 25, Thanksgiving with Amy Helm and Friends. Sugarloaf Performing Arts Center. Info at sugarloafpacny.com. November 11, Sophie Hawkins and Paula Cole. November 12, Blue Oyster Cult. The Stissing Center in Pine Plains and stissingcenter.org. November 12, Jukebox Junkies. November 19, Jay Unger and Molly Mason. Tarrytown Music Hall in Tarrytown, also at tarrytownmusichall.org. November 18th, Joan Osborne with Larry Campbell. November 19th, Comedian Gary Gullman. And November 20, Tower of Power. Last but never least, Town Crier in Beacon and towncrier.com. Every Thursday is an open mic. Friday on the salon stage, Robert Tellefson Band. Friday on the main stage, Trout Fishing in America. Saturday on the salon stage, Rob Canillo. Saturday on the main stage, Blues Blowout with Joe Lewis Walker, Slam Alum, and Albert Castiglia. Sunday brunch with Mark Delgado. Sunday evening with Carla Bonoff. And that does it for musical happenings here on Local Motion. We're going to go out with one more track from today's guests, El Hure. And this one is called Home. Check out elhuremusic.com. And that is spelled E L J U R I M U S I C. Elhuremusic.com. 
She's also on social media, YouTube, and all of that. And thanks for the time here today, El Hure, Cecilia. Thank you. Um, if you missed part of that interview or perhaps all of it and like to listen, just tune into the Local Motion Facebook page where I'll be uploading the interview as well as the YouTube channel where it will be uploaded tonight. Stay tuned for Dr. J with Irie Groove. I will return next week with Scott Petito of NRS Recording Studios. Lots to talk about with him. And until then, I wish you all peace. Unidad